Hey, welcome to this radio channel. And um, I thought, well, I had requests um, from many uh, viewers about, you know, starting up in shortwave. And uh, a lot of you seem to have problems in receiving stations. And I've got a few people saying, wow, I look at what you look, you receive on your radio, what you, you can hear, and I just don't hear nothing. Or I hear only the strong religious of US stations or, you know, very, very specific signals. So, um, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, shortwave. We'll have um, a few videos of things that you need to understand about shortwave radio. First and foremost, you've got that radio. You need to understand um, the fact that in general, and it's a very general rule, so don't take it for cash, but it's usually the case that below 15 megahertz at night, above 12 megahertz in the daytime is a general rule. Now, it's not clearly set like that, and there's definitely some things that can be heard across the clock, you know, at nighttime or daytime uh, from shortwave on other frequencies, but a general rule, okay? Daytime is for a higher frequency range and nighttime is for the lower frequency range. You gotta understand that first. Understand that seasons will influence radio reception. For example, um, in the summer, the longer days will give you propagation that will help higher uh, frequencies and often you'll hear stations easier some stations easily in the summer may, maybe not as diff, you know more difficult to receive in the winter um, it depends on the frequency range and where you want to listen to but the most important is to understand noise because that's probably the biggest problem of any shortwave listener today the number one thing that you'll actually have to cope with is the noise level. Unfortunately, the noise in today's homes is so high that it probably washes out 80% of all shortwave signals. That's why you gotta try different things. First of all, you got to think that, well, it's possible that sitting in your living room with a portable radio might not be the best place to listen to shortwave because of the noise level. If you have a receiver that has a digital readout, the first thing that you should check for is the, the signal level. Now here the antenna is closed, but if I take the antenna out and pull it full extent, look at my noise, look at that. That indicates how strong the noise is actually. It not only indicates how strong a signal from a station is, it also indicates how strong the noise is. Because noise is radio signals. And it's generated by all your devices, computers, TVs. Um, it could be as far away as your neighbors. It might not even come from your home. So it's crazy today listening to shortwave that's the major problem say you don't have a signal indicator signal strength indicator well you can do the same test turn your radio on and just collapse the antenna make sure you don't have no antenna and tune a shortwave frequency listen to the noise leave your volume at same level and you'll see and understand here what I mean. Now let's say I'm gonna take the antenna and extend it now. I just leave the level of the volume at this level. As you hear, you can actually see how much noise you have by doing this you can hear the noise, if, even if you don't have a signal indicator, you, you can hear the noise. So that's the first thing to cope with. You'll have to go around your home. You'll have to go maybe outside your home. It's 
sad but today's shortwave radio listening is a little bit like that you might have to find a spot where noise is you know not as strong move around your home first of all and locate the spots where the noise is the lowest and that's the first task you'll need to do first task so take your radio out and go around your home and check that check your signal indicator try to find a spot where the signal indicator is the lowest when you receive no stations and once you find that spot then you'll go into my next video where we're gonna continue to check how to listen to shortwave stations so that's the first thing you need to check for noise level like I said indicator or if you don't have such an indicator because your receiver maybe is lower end then just listen go around your home where you know by tuning a frequency where there's no station find a spot where that noise that you hear is the lowest when you found that spot that you can actually have less noise check my second video that I'll post um, about the basics of shortwave but unfortunately I have to post a video like this because everybody needs to understand that your enemy is noise and unfortunately most of us will have to cope with it and you know I'm the first guy that needs to cope with it just to give you an idea if I tune 7 megahertz on my high end uh, you know ICOM receiver I'm just gonna post put it right there here we go look at my S meter on that receiver notice how high the needle is that's my noise level on this radio with an outside antenna so it gives you an idea noise is everywhere and you'll have to cope with it in some way and that's why I do the expeditions because you can go to a park you can go to a far away place where you'll actually have uh, lower noise to do some shortwave reception but don't despair there's there's you know I think everywhere there's some spots there's a place you can actually set up and enjoy shortwave radio if you enjoy my videos why not subscribe to my channel I'll uh, be posting lots of videos so you'll know when new videos are online and uh, give us thumbs up if you like the videos, helps us on the ratings on YouTube. And hopefully you enjoy the videos and we'll come back to my channel. So don't forget this is a multi-part series on the basics of shortwave radio.